You're listening to the Health and Happiness Podcast with Travis Kemper and Lauren Maxwell. Each episode, we share easy to implement strategies to improve your health, happiness, and overall quality of life. Meditation is not a way of making your mind quiet. It's a way of entering into the quiet that's already there. Deepak Chopra. Hey, Travis, how's it going? Oh, it's going well. We've had a busy week. Um, I feel like every week's busy right now. It's crazy. You're in a busy um, season of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life's bu- busy. Um, the boys won in football again last night, so we are almost assured the number one spot in the state um, <gasps> coming into the state playoffs. Holy cow. What are the state playoffs? Uh, next week's the last week of the season. We play a team that hasn't won a game, so we should beat them unless we really, really screw up. And then <laughs> the week after – so I guess that's not relevant to um, people listening to this. So <laughs> That's true. We are recording this on the 17th. Um, so on Which the means 23rd, it's probably going to, yeah. We have our last game of the season. And then on the 1st of May should start the playoffs, I think. Nice. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll at least have a home game and play the worst seed in the playoffs. So that'll be a good, good uh, warm up to the rest of the teams. But yeah, we beat our division or we beat our long term rival that we haven't beaten in 11 years last night. So, whoa, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It was Congratulations. It was a lot of fun. Also, uh julia and i contracted on a house we've been looking for 11 months and finally found something that works for us here wow cool yes so that's exciting um that's probably about it what's up in your world a lot of exciting stuff going on over there (laughs) um nothing that exciting comparatively i did um get to practice some of my what do i call it country swing country Social swing? I don't know what it's called. I don't know what style of dance it is. But... I didn't know you were a swinger. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. So... <laughs> um, yeah, I've been learning how to social swing or country swing or whatever. I still don't know what it's called. Um, with one of my friends, Jesse, who I think we started like at the beginning of this pandemic um and I don't see her that often because she lives in Phoenix so it's like whenever we can hang out we practice but this would maybe have been our like seventh time practicing and we're getting pretty good and it's really fun because we can like dance to a whole song and kind of like you know choreograph it as you go but then everything turns out unique and different every time you dance to something and it's just really fun it's really nice yeah sounds awesome it's really awesome not a dancer I, I thought you were a dancer. You told me earlier that it was too easy for you. <laughs> That's why I don't do it anymore because uh-huh. it's too easy. And I just, I master every yeah, dance everything immediately. That, so like everything yeah, you've no ever point. done. Right, right, right. Uh, right. As soon as I start, I just make everybody else look bad on the dance floor. That's and really, I feel bad about yeah, myself. That's really yeah, nice and so. considerate of you to, you know, <laughs> let other people shine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that and a trip over my own feet constantly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little different than mastering every move, but you know, okay, I follow. <laughs> I will say that I am learning how to partner, and I am not the lead, and I've only ever danced like solo, so that is the biggest challenge for me is to like turn my brain off and follow. <laughs> Ooh, well, we have just the topic for you. Today. I know. <laughs> what are you? What are we going to talk about, Travis? Uh, meditation. So talk about turning your brain off. <laughs> yeah, which is not really what meditation is, but yeah, I think you're yeah. about to explain to me what meditation is because I, I mean, clearly have heard that there is so much benefit to it, and there's I've seen a ton of research about it, but I have never meditated ever i don't know anything about it i feel like that's interesting in this conversation simply because if people met me and you and we're going to like guess which one of us meditates 
I bet you that not a single person would guess me. Right. Cause you do meditate. <laughs> right. So I med- I've meditated for the last probably three, three and a half years, almost every day. Um, wow. Have, yeah. The last two months I'm back, I've actually, uh, not been as consistent as normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to get back on my daily meditation, but every morning, pretty much for almost uh, or three, three and a half years, um, I've been meditating before I do pretty much anything. Wow. So do you like wake up in the morning and meditate like straight off the bat or? Uh, generally, Again, I need to get back on the train, but uh, generally, yes, I wake up in the morning, I read, I meditate, I journal, I, what else do I do? I exercise and I plan my day. Yeah, I think you even mentioned that on a previous episode, that that's like your morning routine, which is like stunning to me, because like you said, I feel like anybody who knows the two of us, if you'd have asked that question and like taken a poll, they would have been like, yeah, absolutely, Lauren does that. I don't do any of that except exercise. I should do all of that. Um, and especially like well, journaling because journaling is a very big journal. passion. They don't do it every day though. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I have to be really conscious about journaling. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> interesting. Lauren, we need to work on a routine for you. I know. Cause I know, I know you love the journal. I love to journal. I've actually, that's, that's what I've been doing more of this week. I've been really trying to journal more. I've journaled every single day this last week and oh, I feel so much better when I journal. I'm like, I don't know why I don't do it all the time. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. Maybe we, I don't know if there's much evidence on journaling, but uh, other than like a whole lot of very successful people in every field recommend it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They recommend doing it every day, but I don't know, research-wise, it's definitely not as popular as meditation. Yeah. Um, So I don't know what we'd find, but maybe we'll do uh, another episode on that. That would be cool. Because I feel like this episode, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions because I don't know anything. So I hope you're prepared for basically an interview by me. (laughs) I may or may not be prepared. Depends on your questions. (laughs) That's fair. So I guess I should start with what is meditation? What, what does it mean? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. (laughs) Well, you hit me with that question before the podcast Mm -hmm. and I was like, I have no idea how to answer this question. (laughs) How do you explain it? Yeah. Yeah. So I stole one. Um, I found online just a random definition. Meditation is a mind and body practice that has a long history of use for increasing calmness and physical relaxation, improving psycho- psychological balance, coping with illness, and enhancing overall health and well-being. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. That talks about a lot of the evidence we're going to get further into about the benefits for sure. Um, are there different types of meditation? Sure are. There sure are. <laughs> Love to tell you about them. Don't know about them. <laughs> if, if you're coming here to find out everything about meditation, I suggest you do some research on your own. That's fair. Because we're not going to get get dirty down into the dirty, nitty gritty details yeah. of different type of meditation. Um, we're just more giving an overview. Yeah. I thought it was an important question only because I didn't know if there was more than one type and I didn't know if like, <laughs> <laughs> like maybe certain types work better for certain people, but I guess that's part of the experiment that you'll maybe get to try later in our challenge. Um, so should we talk about some of the benefits that, that are shown in the evidence from meditation? Sure. All right. Yeah, sure. What would you like to start with? Uh, so we found a couple of articles right off the bat that just like outlined here are at least 12 benefits right off the bat um, from meditation. And so that is reducing stress, reducing anxiety, promoting emotional health, um, enhancing self-awareness. It lengthens your attention span. It can reduce age-related memory loss. It can generate kindness. It may help fight addictions. It improves sleep which is an important one for me. (laughs) 
It helps control pain, decreases blood pressure, and good enough. Like this is probably the best part. It's accessible anywhere because you are, you can do this anywhere. I mean, right? I think I don't know. I don't do it. Could you do it anywhere? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't do it while you're walking, but you know. Okay. I think you can pretty much do it anywhere. Anyway. Yeah. So um, a lot of those are the things that I have noticed in my practice. And I oh, cool. started meditation simply because I read about way too many successful people doing it for me not to do it. Mm. And then, and then I've had crazy benefits. So I, I'm not really a stressed or anxious person, person, or at least not somebody that feels a whole lot of stress and anxiety. Yeah. That's not something you really exude either. No, no, no. So, so not so much those, but I'm also not a very self-aware person naturally. I don't think, and my self-awareness has improved so much. With oh, meditation. cool. Um, my focus. So they talked about the lengthening the attention span, definitely able to focus way better. Um, memory loss. Can't speak on that. I memorize. I, I remember a lot of things like if I hear them, but I can't remember anything that I read on a piece of paper. So <laughs> <clears throat> there's that self-awareness. I listen to audio <laughs> books and podcasts. I do not read as my main way of learning. Um, Generate kindness. I'm pretty much a jerk, so I don't think I've gotten that one. Uh, <laughs> You're nice to uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only one. And your um, wife. <laughs> eh. <laughs> I don't need improvement on sleeping. Oh, I'm, you're a good sleeper? Oh, I'm a great sleeper. <laughs> I'm so good. I hit the pillow and I'm out. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah i don't really have pain very often um mostly when i do have pain i just you know beat the crap out of it and it goes away mm -hmm. um blood pressure that's a huge one for me oh yeah yeah so so if you look at me you'd be like yeah that guy doesn't have high blood pressure no you wouldn't uh, think that right but i did um my blood pressure would range from like you know just a little bit high like 123 124 at the best, I was at 120. At the worst, I'd go up to 140 and my head would feel like it's going to explode. I remember um, that in PT school. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. That happened a couple of times in PT school. Yeah. Um, it was not fun. No, no. And then I generally vomit and then it goes back down. Oh, so good. good grief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so once I started blood or once I started blood pressuring, <laughs> once I started meditating, um, my blood pressure has been under 120 for the entire time I've been meditating. Wow. Yeah. That's so, pretty amazing. Like, yeah, I'm consistently 116, 117, 118. High blood pressure just runs in males in my family. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's the only thing I ever found that took it down. Wow, so, that's incredible. Yeah, I've had great great uh results from it for sure. No kidding. So I highly recommend it to anybody, especially people like you that need to be more kind. Yeah, that is a flaw of mine, isn't it? <laughs> I, sure. I think I think that's what everybody would look at me and be like, she is not kind enough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I've I've actually heard that many times. People have told me that about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I don't think I've ever heard that. Yeah, I think I've uh, heard that I need to be a little bit more mean than anything. <laughs> but Learn to say no. Yeah, How's that going, say, by the way? I still have to work <laughs> was that Was that enough of an answer? Uh, I'm still working on it. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's off guard. really hard. Sorry. It's really hard. Um, but anyway, even if I don't need to be more kind, I definitely have lots of stress and anxiety. Um, and I don't sleep. <laughs> so there's a lot of things I could improve. Um, which that's why I was really excited about doing this episode is because I know nothing about it and I know that it's beneficial and it's cool that you have a lot of experience with it so that I can get to ask you some advice that I want to know. And hopefully our listeners want to know too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So one of the cool things I think about um, 
this type of thing, like meditation is, is a bazillion years old. It's as old as man, mankind, yeah. right? Um, it's definitely as old as writing. The earliest books we have talk about meditation and stoicism and things like that. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I think is cool is right now we're, we've been so in health research, we've been in this, oh, medication is so great for so long. And finally, in the like 2010s and on, we've gotten back to like, what is health really about? And meditation has been studied a lot since then. Yeah. Um, that's meditation, really cool. exercise, diet, you know, the natural things have been mm-hmm. studied a lot since then. And we're finding that they, they just have all of these great health benefits. So I think that's exciting for it's really exciting. the future. Yeah, it's really exciting not to be so dependent on medication. A pill? Yeah. And instead, yeah. like, have all of these tools at your disposal that you can incorporate into your daily life. like not by going to see a doctor <laughs> like you can do all this stuff like yeah. meditating and working out and you know like you you're in control of that which is cool you don't need a prescription for it right right um and the only side effects are positive yeah even that's better. the other thing about pills they they have they, negative they side effects and a lot of them and a lot of them yeah yeah, like you're trading in something, like you want, you're taking a pill to get rid of something, but you're also trading something else for that, like a negative for a negative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, makes yeah, sense. yeah. <laughs> you're getting a positive benefit from the pill, but then you're getting a negative benefit from the pill right. that a lot of my patients end up, they take the pill and then they get a side effect and then they take another pill for that for side that effect. For that side effect. And right. then it's just and on, then and on, and on, that, on and on and on and on and on. Right. And it's just chain reaction of, oh, side effect, new pill, side effect, new pill, side effect, new pill, fall on the floor. Now you've got a broken hip. That's <sighs> so sad. It's, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. That's got to be the hard part about, like, the population that you work with, for sure. Yeah, but you can make huge changes. It's so much fun. That's cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, so... Here's one study. Um, there's a lot of research on the blood pressure thing. I am not the only one that has experienced that. Yeah, that came up um, multiple times when we were researching. Yeah, it's it's very well researched. And um, it the evidence is very solid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially for people like me, like that four to six um, MMHG, millimeters of mercury. Um, when you're just a little bit hypertensive, you can really bring it down with with this. And then, and then again, it's it's one of those things like when you're when you're thinking about this and you're like, well, I'm 12 millimeters of mercury high. I'm I'm sitting at 132. Well, you compound things with the exercise, the diet, and right. um, meditation and other things, and that's how you can bring that down. If yeah, you are a little can higher. be a significant difference for you the more that you do yeah um there was this study and this one talks a little bit i mean a little bit about a lot of things (laughs) um but i thought it was cool because it it took basically like one month of sessions of meditation and like this was a very short span of time um and so they took it was eight sessions so twice a week of meditation with caregivers so people who have notoriously like very hard stressful jobs caring for a loved one um and they went through this practice of discussing the evidence with all of the people that were participating and then moving through like a little bit of like mobility beforehand before going into like breathing and then body awareness Um, and it talked about like body scan, progressive muscle relaxation, visualization, and conscious observation as like the types of meditation. Those are all pretty foreign to me, but I I know what body scan is. (laughs) Um, But again, different types of meditation. And all of these people who participated in one month of just these eight sessions, because these participants, um, they had asked them if they had done any 
between like any more over than that during the week. And they all had said, no, they were too busy. Um, so with just these sessions, they found improved mental health, improved um, heart rate and blood pressure, improved happiness and psychological symptoms. Um, and that's just one month. Yeah, you've well, been it's doing just it one for, month. And you've been doing it for three years. <laughs> Right. And it's just one month and it's only two out of seven days a week. Right. Exactly. Right. So if you do it every day and it doesn't take long, you can do it in three minutes. Um, but if you do it oh, every day, <laughs> imagine the compounding effects and how much you can get. Um, I mean, two sessions a week, that's nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that study was particularly interesting just because it talked about that, that short term and like very low frequency um, with all of these great effects. And that was in 2020, so a very recent study. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's also a lot of literature on depression um, and the the positive benefits of meditation on depression. Um, I don't know if we want to go into any of these in, in well, I know you do want to go into one of these in particular. Yeah, actually. there was there so was I'll let one, you do that. <laughs> there was one I was gonna say that I just found particularly interesting um because it talked about how it decreases amygdala activity. So like making actual changes in the brain, which the amygdala is a very emotional part of your brain that is specifically related to especially like fear. It's very like fear-based. Um, and I'm a very fearful individual, like very highly emotional, very highly fearful. And so when I, <laughs> when I read this, when Travis and I were doing the research before, I was like, whoa. And then Travis was like, what? And I was like, this improves my amygdala. Why am I not doing this? <laughs> Super interesting. I, uh, yeah, I honestly don't know why I have not meditated before now, um, but that's a, a bigger reason why I should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in other areas of your life, uh, there's also a growing body of research that is already pretty big, but a growing body of research on pain, just meditation and mediating pain um, that, again, just has... A lot of positive research on it um, in decreasing chronic pain, in decreasing back pain, in decreasing your response to pain if I hit you in the arm. Um, so an immediate decrease. Wow. Yeah. So you're you're literally making yourself tougher by meditating, which which is Who does yeah, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. It's weird. Um, it is really weird. Yeah. But it's really yeah, cool. It's, it's, it's so cool. Um, so yeah, let's just some other benefits. And I know, so this is probably not going to be a shocker to anybody, but when you grow up playing sports and stuff like that, and you are just the typical guy and you saw this in PT school and actually it was most of the girls as well. But when somebody tried to get us to meditate, we're all like, yeah, this is fooey yeah. garbage nonsense. Uh -huh. I was definitely like that. But then I looked at the, the um, studies for athletes and I remember over and over and over again, reading about, I used to read biographies of athletes all the time, Michael Jordan, Jerry Rice. Um, and they would talk about how they visualized. I know a visualization. I've talked about that before. I didn't know that was a type of meditation. <laughs> yeah, it's a type of meditation. So, um, but athletes, so much. meditation with athletes, um, they've showed a, a ton of um, benefits again, increasing your self awareness, increasing your attitude, increasing your likelihood of reaching flow state, um, increasing your sport specific performance, better focus again. Um, which obviously better focus is probably going to make you better. Um, an improved ability to deal with failure. I think this is really, really important because that's this, powerful. Um, yeah, we talked about that in strength training where mm -hmm. um, we're kind of all afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. 
we're raised to be afraid of failure, I would say, in the yeah. society. And um, we talked about that in strength training. Same with athletics. Like, even if you win the game, you know, we watched video this morning. Guys screwed up every play. You know, you failed on every single play. Otherwise, we'd have blown them out instead of beating them by seven points. So um, improved ability to deal with those failures, get back up and do better next time. Yeah. And that, I mean, keeps you in the game longer too, which is really important. Oh, I'm doing a lot of like sports uh, research just because my company is kind of expanding into treating pediatric sports stuff. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. So we're talking about like, we're in our marketing part, we're talking about how the more that they're able to deal with failure, the longer that they'll be able to play because kids are going to burn out if they, all they care about is like, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. And then they're not going to go on and like do this throughout the rest of their lives. They're kids. And so if you want them to like, I don't know, get like a scholarship to go to college, that's like an athletic scholarship and, and they're like little, you want <clears throat> them to know how to deal with failure. So this is a really awesome way of like incorporating that. Yeah, well, and not only that, but just um, if you want them to keep playing to get the benefits of sports, which there are a ton. Sure. Um, a ton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The benefits of sports on your life like are, are dramatic. Yeah. Um, so if you want people to keep playing sports, which I think is a good thing to want um, that's a great thing. based on the research, we should probably have an uh, episode on that. Or just sports, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on the psychological and um, social, emotional and, and yeah. social benefits <laughs> physical, of sports for yeah. kids. Yeah, and physical. Yeah, that's like, gosh, that's somehow like one of the least important ones. I feel like I know, kids. which is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So uh, one other area that you know I love to talk about is mortality and how does meditation affect mortality in a hot second since we've talked about mortality i know i can't believe i forgot about it on the pets episode yeah it's crazy i don't even think we talked about it on the um comparison don't even episode. say it i'm sorry don't say it i can't forget about it twice okay. anyway in case you're wondering it's here for now. the pets episode if you were if you were like well he didn't tell me uh pets do help you live longer there so, you go now you know now you um, know so there's not a whole lot of research on meditation and mortality yet. I would bet you in the next, even by 2030, we will have a significant body of evidence for this. But I found one randomized control trial, which is really good, um, high quality evidence, where they took 201 overweight African-American patients with some sort of heart condition, and they followed them up for five years. <clears throat> and they used transcendental meditation in the um, uh, experiment group. And it didn't say how many, how often they did it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not, I don't have the greatest evidence here. However, the transcendental meditation group was 40% 48% less likely to suffer a heart attack, stroke, or die than the control group, which was doing no meditation. Wow. Or at least instructed to do any meditation. So, yeah, that's huge. Now, that's just one study on one condition. But, I mean, you get all those other benefits that we talked about. Your lifespan is most likely going to improve. Your quality of life is going to improve. Everything's going to improve. Yeah, absolutely. And you said you could do it in like three minutes. Okay, so we're going to pretend I'm totally dumb about meditation because I am. Because <laughs> we have to pretend. Yeah, that I'm pretending. That's, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Pretending. Mm -hmm. um, but you can do it like in three minutes a day. Yeah, so... So when I fall off the wagon or when I was starting, there's an app called Headspace. I okay. never paid for it. It's free. Oh, um, nice. Well, I should say there's an introductory course in it that's like 10 sessions. It's free and I just redo those. Um, 
So I think they offer three, five, and 10 minute sessions, and it's all guided meditation. They tell you exactly what to do. It's super easy, and I highly recommend it. They also have done their own research to show the benefits of it through their app. Oh, um, cool. So it's actually, yeah, they've actually had studies for that app in particular. Um, but I highly recommend it. You can either have a man with an Australian accent, if that is good for you and relaxing <laughs> or or there's a female voice um those are the only two options you get with the free session but yeah, yeah i think three three five and ten minutes is what they offer i would start with three yeah go for three and then after a week try and go five and then go ten and then i end up i do other uh meditations um tony robbins has one called uh priming that I love and it kind of incorporates all the different types of meditation that I think are available, but I don't know that much about the different types of meditation. I just know it's worked for me. Oh well, yeah. Uh, I mean, stick to what works for you for sure. Right. Right. But it, it works. It, it goes through uh, several different subjects. I don't know. Like there's a healing thing and then there's uh, visualization uh, for goals. And then there's um, gosh, what else? I don't know. It's good. All you have to do is type in Tony Robbins priming and it'll come right up. It's like 14 minutes long. That's my favorite one. That's cool. So do you like focus on different things during these meditations or is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They tell you what to do and you focus on different things. Um, Yeah. So start with the Headspace app. So learn your task, your challenge and anybody else that's listening. That's like, Ooh, this does sound interesting and good. Your challenge this week is to download Headspace or there's other ones. There's Calm. There's probably thousands now. Um, but uh, I like Headspace and just start meditating and try and either make it the beginning of your day or end of the day is what I would recommend. Maybe you end up doing both, but um, give it a shot. Yeah. And I think that's really helpful to know that like, it doesn't have to be super long. Cause I guess for some reason I had this like idea that it had to be like an hour. <laughs> oh, good God, no. and, and I was like, that's so intimidating. Like I can't do that. Um, and also, I mean, I just had all these like wrong ideas of what meditation was like for one that you had to have like a blank, quiet mind. Like you weren't supposed to be thinking about anything at all um and that's I don't know how to do that (laughs) um my other problem Uh, with meditation is anytime I've ever tried it I've fallen asleep (laughs) well do it sitting up maybe yeah I've fallen asleep you fall asleep sitting up without a back to the chair why like fall over (laughs) please um set up your phone to record when you do it and you're sitting in a chair without a back because I really want to see that you fall over. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> it's a fun time. Um, but I don't know. I told you that I the last time I had tried it, I'd fallen asleep. And then you had said, well, why don't you do it before bed then? Because you don't sleep at night. And then I was like, don't, like why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't. I like to point out the obvious. Yeah, and those are the things that I usually uh, <laughs> don't think about. So... Um, I really don't have a whole lot of excuses to not try it. You've made it very easy and accessible. Uh, I can start with three minutes. I can do a guided meditation and I can do it before bed and I can sleep better. Wow. I've learned a lot. (laughs) Sounds like a a win, 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 win. Yeah. Let's. You should do it. I should do it. And I hope that other people will take this challenge with me. Um, I'm definitely going to try to do it. Maybe before I go to bed, maybe that's going to be my, and maybe in the morning. I don't know if it's only three minutes, I could totally do it twice. Um, but definitely I want to fall do back it. asleep. Yeah, definitely. I want to do it before I go to bed. That's my goal every day, at least for this week. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. So when you do it tonight, you can wake up and text me in the morning. And there let you me go. Know how I'll let it you went. know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, you got anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. This was really helpful. Thank you for challenging me with this topic because 
I don't think I have ever known less about a topic that we talked about. <laughs> oh, welcome to my world. <laughs> Says the person who like remembers everything that he learns. Only if I hear it. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please, if you haven't, leave us a review on the podcast. It really helps us reach more people um, and continue to write in with your questions and anything that you want us to hear or want to hear us talk about. Um, thank you. And we'll see you next week. This Bye. was fun. Bye. Ah, this was fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to this episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode and are getting benefits from our content. If your life is improving in part due to the information in this podcast, we would greatly appreciate you sharing the episode with your family and friends on social media and leaving us a review so we can continue to reach more people and improve the health and happiness of the community at large. Thanks again, and we will see you next week for another episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast.